project that has embarked on providing internet services to rural South Africa while also giving the community access to affordable solar-powered uh, Wi-Fi telecommunications network. The digital divide in South Africa is wide and this project aims to bridge that gap by allowing everyone to have access to internet. The Zenzeleni project has so far been able to provide access to solar-powered Wi-Fi networks to the Mankosi community in the Eastern Cape, which is for the most part disconnected from the national electricity grid but to give us more insight on Zenzeleni is professor Sean Pether who is the chair of information systems at the University of the Western Cape professor Pether, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to morning live uh, good morning simply and good morning to your viewers well it's, it's, it's great having you on the show for for purposes of understanding the enormity uh, enormity rather of this project uh, professor I, I think we should rather start by uh, going through the numbers of the people in rural communities that they have access to internet um simply i wouldn't be able to give you the numbers offhand at a national level but what we do know in south africa in general is that uh, that people who have access to the internet from anywhere are around 60 percent of the population and those who have access to the internet at home at are around 10 percent of the population and when you talk about rural areas then that figure comes down to at least two percent or under that so rural south africa largely has been left out of the digital era to date so what are some of the factors that led you to identify that gap in this market? Well, by and large, South Africa hasn't been any different from many other countries in terms of addressing the divide in, the, uh, in, in rural areas. Um, this work started at the University of the Western Cape at around 2012 with a doctoral student, Carlos Ray Monero, and then a postdoctoral work who was intent and keen to find a solution to the rural divide. And so it's taken us about eight years of, of experimenting, investigating with a, in, in terms of a real life action research project to come to the stage now of, of demonstrating a model that is workable and that has the potential for scalability. Um, the model first and foremost in terms of it being different, because remember, we. We, for many years we've been struggling to address uh, the digital divide and universal service and access in South Africa without success. And we believe in this model uh, in demonstrating a bottom-up community ownership and entrepreneurship uh, way of delivering communications, we're presenting something innovative and different. And I suppose that what makes it more special is that it involves, uh, you know, a not-for-profit company that works with cooperatives in the various communities to provide affordable uh, voice and data services. And uh, in that way, it seeks to keep the resources, it seeks to keep the profits within those communities in which they work in, isn't it? Precisely. And that's the beauty of the model. Um, I mean, to date, the traditional telecoms model is for independent operators or companies to get a license, deliver services, and make a profit. Um, in this model here, around 2016, a, the cooperative was first formed. The cooperative, local cooperative, being a means of uh, com local community ownership. That local community cooperative that was um, uh, brought together through democratic means in the rural village are actually the, license, the licensees. They have a license exemption from the regulator and they are a registered business so they're an independent isp and so that's the one part of the model the other part is that the university of the western cape has spun out an implementation arm as we call it which is the not-for-profit company and the not-for-profit company is there to support incubate and help the cooperatives to become a sustainable um, sustainable business so is this model uh, work does this model rather work independently or uh, do you work collaboratively with uh, some of the country's mobile telephone uh, network communica uh, pr providers? Um, the model right now is working quite independently. We, uh, uh, we have approached some of the uh, license operators for various uh, reasons such as sharing of, sharing of spectrum unsuccessfully to date. But at the moment, the, the, the NPC supported the cooperative to build a wireless network uh, between Imtata and the village itself. 
and then the local air, air access network uh, using Wi-Fi hotspots. So it's completely independent. It's independent of anybody else. And it's a partnership between the NPC supporting the local community in owning and maintaining their own network. And I suppose then that uh, Zenzeleni pays nothing in terms of uh, you know, paying for the infrastructure and as well as selling the services. So wh where does the community fit in then? So the com simply where the community fits in because first and foremost they, the, the, the cooperative being the representatives of the community are, are the legal owners of the network. They're the ISP and they provide services to the community. And as you indicated before, unlike previous uh, 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 models or the traditional models of telecoms, the income being generated stays within the community. In research that Carlos undertook that was published in 2016, we found that approximately 22% plus of income in a rural area was leaving the community through telecommunications costs. So here, the, the local cooperative owns the network and the money is retained in the community. The, the, uh, Just to interrupt the you there, Professor, we don't have much time, unfortunately. For purposes of understanding how the project uh, for purposes of understanding how this model works, Professor, uh, we do understand that all the network points are backed up uh, with, uh, you know, solar panels, uh, uh, trickle chargers, and 12-volt deep cycle batteries. Why was the decision uh, to use this method taken? Uh, some people, up to a few years ago, there was no electricity grid available to communities like uh, Mancosi. So in the initial days of the, of the network, it was powered solely through, uh, through battery and solar. At the moment, or recently in the past two years or so, uh, the Eskom grid is present in Mancosi, and so the solar and batteries then operate as a backup, as is the case in probably you know, most of the urban and other telecoms infrastructure. You know, Professor, thank you so much for your time. This is certainly one of the country's greatest uh, innovations uh, in the time where the country faces massive energy challenges. Uh, we really, really appreciate your time. That was uh, Professor Sean Petter talking to us about the Zenzeleni project, which aims to provide adequate internet connectivity in uh, rural areas. Pearl Shongwet, over to you.